When we talk about electric cars, there's this buzz about them being the eco-friendly knights of the road, right? But let's unpack that a bit. Sure, they don't puff out those nasty tailpipe emissions like gas guzzlers do. But the truth is, they are not the solution to global warming and climate change that people have made them to be. Keep watching this video to find out how. The first thing you have to remember is that it's all about where the power comes from. Think of it this way. You plug in your electric ride, all smiles about saving the planet. But pause for a second. The real question is, how's that power made? If it's from coal-happy power plants, well, that's not exactly a win for Mother Earth. Electric grids need a severe makeover before EVs can claim the emissions-free crown. It's like having a clean car, but using a dirty sponge to wash it. Studies have shown that the process of making a regular EV battery spews out more than seven tons of carbon emissions. Yeah, just for the battery. It's like your car's carbon footprint has its footprints. Now check this out. When you crunch the numbers, some EVs, like the Chevrolet Bolt, actually emit less carbon per mile than old-school gas guzzlers, like the Toyota Camry or Ford F-150. Sounds like a win, right? Well, not really. If that bolts sipping power from a coal-fired plant, it might not be as green as you think. So there is the first plot twist. Even EVs have a carbon skeleton in their closet. While they're cleaner on the road, the process of making them still leaves a mark on the environment. But more than the process of making them, the raw materials and batteries are a threat. The shiny exterior of electric vehicles might paint a picture of eco-friendliness, but let's dig a little deeper into those batteries. So, what's the deal with these batteries? Well, most electric cars cozy up to lithium-ion cells, cozying up to some not-so-friendly raw materials. We're talking about rare earth elements, lithium, the star of the show, and cobalt, which has a particularly sketchy reputation. Now the extraction process for these materials reads like an environmental horror story. Think air and water pollution, land getting chewed up, and even groundwater facing contamination. It's like Mother Nature's worst nightmare unfolding. And it's not just a far-off problem. There's this Lithium Americas permit wrangle happening right on U.S. soil. If that gets the green light, well, let's just say it won't be a picnic for the environment. But wait, there's more. Brace yourself for the human rights twist. The whole mining gig for lithium and cobalt? Yeah, it's got some serious skeletons in the closet. We're talking child labor, slavery, and all sorts of civil liberties being trampled on. And get this, it's not just a world away. This stuff happens in countries far from where most of these materials end up. So, while electric cars might seem like the good guys on the road, their batteries tell a different story. They're basically the problematic relatives crashing the eco-party, reminding us that the path to green isn't always so black and white. Still on EV batteries, the mining process for EV batteries affects some countries harder than others. In the United States, the primary source of lithium is Nevada's Silver Peak, accounting for approximately 2% of the global lithium supply. Nations such as Australia, Argentina, Bolivia, and Chile dominate the lithium market and produce the bulk of the lithium used in the world. Also, the Democratic Republic of Congo, DRC, plays a central role in cobalt production, contributing around 70% of the world's cobalt supply. However, many of the DRC's cobalt mines operate under inadequate regulations, and reports of child labor are prevalent. And here's where it gets real. These industries often set up shop in lower-income communities, using their resources and labor, like there's no tomorrow. It's a tale as old as time. Rich nations benefit, while poorer ones foot the bill, both environmentally and socially. So when we talk about EV batteries, it's not all rainbows and sunshine. Behind the scenes, there's a darker side, where some countries bear the brunt of the electric revolution more than others. It's a stark reminder that the road to green isn't always fair or just. Now we have been talking about how the process of making EV batteries defeats the point of EVs being environmentally friendly. But that's not where the irony ends. Let's shine a light on what happens when electric vehicle EV batteries kick the bucket. As the older generations of EVs hit retirement age, dealing with their spent batteries is like a game of hot potato. Nobody wants to be left holding the bag. Nowadays it is different. While lithium-ion batteries pack a punch in energy storage, recycling them is a whole different ballgame. In the U.S., traditional lead-acid batteries have it pretty sweet. A whopping 99% get a second shot at life through recycling. But when it comes to lithium-ion batteries, only around 5%, 
get the recycling treatment. Now let's talk about the process. Recycling these babies guzzles up water like there's no tomorrow and belches out air pollutants like it's going out of style. It's like trying to clean up a mess with a leaky hose. Not exactly efficient or eco-friendly. Sure, there's talk of innovation on the horizon. Companies like Nissan, BMW, and GM are dabbling in giving old batteries a second life, using them for grid storage or designing packs with reuse in mind. But here's the thing. What about all those spent batteries piling up? Are they just getting tossed in the ground like yesterday's news? If so, that's like sweeping the dirt under the rug. Not exactly a sustainable solution. So yeah, battery recycling, it's like a broken record. Limited options, limited solutions. Until we figure out how to give these batteries a proper send-off, we're stuck with a ticking time bomb of spent power packs. At this point, it would seem like everything that has to do with EV batteries has a problem. Well, yes, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. The process of accelerating EV production will also overload the grid. As of 2021, only a teensy-weensy 1% of America's cars were electric. A few years later, GM's got some big dreams. They're aiming to kick gas-powered cars to the curb by 2035, gunning for the biggest EV share in North America. And they're not alone. Ford, Volkswagen, and even Tesla are revving up their EV game. California's jumping on the bandwagon, too, eyeing a gas-car-free future by the 2030s. Sounds like a plan, right? Well, not so fast. To power up this electric revolution, we've got some serious legwork ahead. First up, we need more plugs. Like, a lot more. Think about it. If everyone's hopping on the EV train, where are they all going to juice up? Home and work charging spots are sweet. But what about folks in apartments? They're stuck in the slow lane. And here's the kicker. Going all electric means guzzling up 25% more juice than we do now. That's a lot of power plants and fancy transmission upgrades. Take California, for instance. If everyone plugs in at once, are we looking at more blackout parties? And let's not forget the not-so-secret sauce. Most of our juice comes from coal and natural gas grids. Sure, EVs cut down on greenhouse emissions, but plug them into a coal-powered grid, and well, the eco-friendliness takes a hit. Until EVs cozy up to solar, wind, or nuclear energy, their green makeover is stuck in traffic. So while EV ownership's zooming ahead, our infrastructure's stuck in the slow lane. It's like having a turbocharged engine with a busted transmission. We're revving up, but the road ahead is looking bumpy. And as if that's not enough, the range claimed by EVs isn't always adequate, thus leading to more recharges. Range is one of the selling points of an EV, that magical number that dictates how far your electric ride can go before needing a recharge. Sounds simple, right? Well, not quite. Take Lucid Air, for example. It boasts a whopping 516 mile range, a king among EVs. But how does that range hold up in extreme weather or when hauling a heavy load? Have you ever seen an EV stuck in the snow, begging for a boost from a gas generator or getting a tow from a diesel truck? It happens more often than you'd think. Now let's check out the F-150 Lightning. It claims a range of up to 320 miles, not too shabby, but put it through a tough 6,100 pound tow test and suddenly, that range shrinks to a mere 100 miles. Sure, when you compare EVs to gas guzzlers like the Camaro, their range looks pretty impressive. But here's the kicker. A beefed-up F-150 with an extended range tank can outdo even the lucid air. And while EVs emit way fewer emissions, what good is that range if you end up relying on fossil fuel power to get you out of a jam? Let's face it. Some brands and models still fall short in the range department. And less range means more pit stops for charging gobbling up electricity like there's no tomorrow. So, while EVs are cruising toward a greener horizon, their range limitations remind us that the road to electric paradise is still under construction. We've talked about recycling issues, but what about the long-term investment of swapping out that power pack? And before you ask why would you need to swap out the battery, let's not forget the lifespan, about 12 to 15 years in cozy climates, but shrink that to 8 to 12 years in extreme weather. Replacing an EV battery can set you back anywhere from $5,000 to a staggering $15,000 or more. And it does help that if one cell in the battery goes kaput, you're looking at replacing the whole thing. And believe this, it isn't cheap. Labor costs alone can slap you with a bill ranging from $900 to $2,000. Say goodbye to those $200 lead-acid batteries you swap out at the local auto shop. So, what's the alternative? Refurbishing? 
Sure, it's an option, but recycling's already playing catch up. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel and share it. Thank you.